removing that function and putting it under the Shika bill, if you look at the bill, the Media Council bill that was published, uh, gazetted on 22nd of July, and some of the writings and the details there, almost word for word with a few alterations, they sound very much like the tribunal established under the Kika bill. Therefore, meaning that the parliamentarians has removed that function of the Media Council of Kenya and put it under this. And this is the body which is supposed to be under the law taking care of such technical matters such as the licensing procedures. Mm. But when you talk about media freedom, the freedom for yourself and myself and every other Kenyan to express themselves, mm -hmm. you are talking about content, you're talking about ideas, you're talking about the space that we have as Kenyans to talk, mm. to debate, mm. to discuss. You're not talking about conditions for the royal media to be licensed. That is something else. That is technical. Right. Uh, uh, j just looking at the situation uh, at the moment, the ball is really in the president's court. Yes. So far, we've seen a section of members of parliament saying that the bill should be assented to in its current form. We've also had uh, the whole debate taking a political tangent where even court leader saying uh, the Jubilee government knew all along what was happening in regards to the Kenya Information and Communication Bill. Now the president says that uh, he is actually set to engage with different uh, stakeholders. How serious can we take the president's word? You know, with all due respect, we have to take our president seriously. But having said that, the media and academics such as ourselves must put on the critical heart and think and look and see through these things. How can a bill such as this, a bill which speaks to the Constitution, and between you and me, the President and the Vice President have got this singular responsibility to defend the Constitution. Constitution. And if there are any constitutional bodies which have got to be set up to operate independently. Sometimes one wonder, how can a parliament that is jubilee dominated go through a lengthy process of negotiation and consultation? And I'm sure that there are members of parliament who are lawyers. And if they're not lawyers, they can read what the constitution says. It is very clear it becomes quite worrisome to think that the president and the price vice president, or deputy president rather, were not aware that these kind of provisions will transgress the constitution. I think for me that is the greatest concern. Because all of a sudden, don't worry, don't panic. <laughs> but all of a sudden, people do not wake up in one day and they are panicking like mad people in the market. Negotiations, discussions have been going on. Some of these provisions have been debated, written about, discussed in boardrooms for a long time. Over two, year, uh, two weeks, two months, three months, six months, name it. And in fact, some of the concern, we haven't even touched on the hefty penalties. Mm -hmm. Because to 20 million for a media house, you know, honestly, uh, uh, I mean, one million let, let, let us be serious, you know, even 5 million. And, and if you can be fined that day in, day out, You're close you, know, you close yeah. shop yeah. very easily. Yeah. But you see, when you read the constitution, it is very clear that the body that is going to be set up, or parliamentarians who are mandated to set up, would be independent, it says. And I'll read for you so that at least we don't make this as uh, some kind of, uh, you know, hearsay. It, 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 the Constitution says, 